I'm really trying very hard to avoid the temptation of saying to you, Happy New Year. And the reason is because in the spiritual universe that surrounds us, there is no 2020 that just ended and there is no 2021 about to begin. As you know, spirit is timeless. Welcome to Stir Up Your Purpose channel. That opening statement was taken from the Beyond Words and Thoughts seminar titled All is Incorporeal by Ab Fitch. The seminar spanned from 1971 to 1972. Here, Ab is talking about incorporeality, your true essence and my true essence. Let me share another part of the seminar. And so, your spirit now is not a finite spirit. There never was such a thing. It's not a localized spirit. It's not a 1971 or a 1972 spirit. And I will also add, it's not a 2020 or a 2021 spirit. It is timeless as the Father, spaceless as the Father, infinitely eternal pure and perfect and immaculate forever. It has no beginning and no end. You are an everywhere spirit, an everywhere spirit, or you must come back into a sense of mortality. You can never be separated from the Father. You are an everywhere spirit. Now, you rest in that everywhereness of yourself, and you find an infinite father as an infinite everywhere son. You are around the corner. You are around across the ocean. You are up and down every street. Everywhere is your spirit. You can never forget, forget this. Everywhere is your spirit. And where your spirit is, only your spirit is. Your name may be Mary, and his name may be Bill, and he is saying, my spirit is everywhere, and you are saying, my spirit is everywhere, and you are both right, because you are both one spirit everywhere. Now, I would like to indicate that the works of Ab Fitch is not mainstream, and the work is for those who are ready to look beyond their five senses. A walk would challenge someone who has not looked at life from an absolute perspective. That is, from a place of God is all and all is God, and that there is no other. But if you are willing to go within to that still small voice, the I that I am, life will take on a whole new and beautiful meaning. I invite you to listen to the seminar several times. Uh, there are two parts. Uh, part one is about one hour and part two is about 35 minutes. Enjoy. Welcome to all of you. It's a great pleasure to see so many new faces today. And equally, a genuine pleasure to see our regular friends. I'm really trying very hard to avoid the temptation of saying to you, Happy New Year. And the reason is because in the spiritual universe that surrounds us, there is no 1971 that just ended. And there is no 1972 about to begin. As you know, spirit is timeless. You can never divide spirit up into minutes and hours and days and years. The spirit of Christ in you does not live 
in time, space, in the physical forms that we place in time and space with our five senses. Christ doesn't do that. There is a living spirit which is life substance. This living spirit moves through your consciousness when it is receptive and forms itself, its life substance, into what you call the things of this world. Unless you are receiving of that spiritual life substance, another process takes place in which the forms that come into your life are without divine substance. They are mortal forms, not the immortal forms that are possible. And then these mortal forms age, wither, and die. Never do the mortal forms become the divine creation. Never do they show forth the perfection of God. And so we live in what is called our corporeal universe. And if you were to try to understand the chapter in corporeality today, you would have to supply to that chapter several missing links. They may be there behind the words, but if you're not overly perceptive and have finished the chapter and then sit back and say, well, we have an incorporeal universe, we have incorporeal man, we have incorporeal God, but how do I bring that into living experience? And that's where you must supply the missing piece in what for you may be a great discovery. Your five senses have no capacity to experience life. There is no life to be experienced through your eye, your ear, your nose, your mouth, or your sense of touch. You will experience sensation and mistake it for life, but it is never more than sensation, and that still isn't the great discovery. This is hard to take, but the world that you experience is in your five senses. There is no other world than the world that you experience in your five senses and the world that you experience is never outside your five senses. The great dream of life is performed within the imaginary five senses. You're not looking at a sick person. You're looking at an image in your senses. You're not looking at a healthy person. You're looking at an image in your senses. And the only place that person exists is in your senses. That person has no existence outside of the eyes of the beholder. Whatever you experience in this world has no existence outside of your senses. And if you were to remove your five senses, for you there would be no world. There would be no people. There would be no rivers and mountains and sky and stars. They only exist in your senses. 
That is where you will find the corporeal world. When a magician stands before you with a big top hat and pulls out a rabbit, nobody in the audience really thinks that he just created a rabbit. They know it was there all the time. When Jesus Christ reveals a healthy man where a sick one was, he didn't create a healthy man where he reveals an eye that can see where a blind eye was, he didn't create an eye that could see. He was revealing that where your five senses and my five senses and the five senses of every person on earth witnesses a corporeal world, there is another invisible and incorporeal world present, undetected, unrecognized, unseen, but real. He was revealing that where you stand as a person in a corporeal form, there is something else there that is you, but isn't visible to you. And that's something else invisible to you, which is you, he revealed to be the image and likeness of God. Wherever there is a man or a woman or a child, there is God invisible. And God is that invisible child, that invisible man, that invisible woman. Where we see the sick man, we are unable to see the invisible God. Where we see the well man, we are unable to see the invisible God. And our five senses form a concept of that which we cannot see. Each of you has produced an image which is called you. You have done it with your five senses. And we who look at you with our five senses have accepted your five sense image. But where we see the five sense image that you project called you, the Christ tells us there is only the invisible Spirit of God. Now last year, we may have walked in this coat of skin, but we endeavored to put off the old man, the mortal creature, the dying creature, the creature who is vulnerable because he is not the divine creation. And to a measure we discovered that this creature who receiveth not the things of God, who is not in any way supported by God or even protected by God, is really illegitimate an image in time and space, not the child of God, that no person walking the earth is the child of God, though he be what he calls holy or not, though he be a saint or a sinner, he is not the child of God because God has no child in the flesh. Flesh and blood is not the child of God. And if we were to spend many more centuries trying to make flesh and blood the child of God, we would fail. If we were to spend many more centuries trying to improve the humanhood of flesh and blood, we would be denying and defying the commands of Scripture. For we are told to walk in the kingdom of God to be perfect as our Father, to put off the garment of mortality, to re be reborn of the Spirit and of the truth. We cannot comply with these commands if we are creatures of flesh and blood, because the natural man receiveth not the things of God. 
So we come to perceiving that we have entertained a concept of ourselves called flesh and blood in which we think we live. But God is not in flesh and blood. God is neither in the saint nor in the sinner. God is not in any race or in any religion. God is God. Spirit is never mortal being. Spirit is never encased in a mortal image. Spirit is all. And when we watch the Master Jesus Christ walk the earth, we were looking at the Spirit of God which we could not see. We were told, I am the Spirit of God, when he said, Thou seest me, thou seest the Father. The light, the way, the truth, the resurrection. Why? Because I who stand before you am the Spirit of God. And I am the resurrection because when you find the Spirit of God where you are, you have found that which I have come to reveal. The Spirit of God that stands where you are is the resurrection. Yourself released from the false concept of flesh and blood from the image that you maintain in mind from the mortal sense of self is revealed to be the incorporeal spirit of God. No matter where you look, no matter who you see, that individual is not there. That object is not there. That person is not there. Why? Because the Master revealed that only God is there. And if you remember last week, we were told to look back at that page 126, I think it was, in the previous chapter, 126, and to underscore and read it continuously until it made an impression upon us, namely, you are really not being. God is being you. You are really not being. God is being you. If God is being you, who do they bury? Who gets sick? Who has a head cold? Who has a pain? God? Or is there a concept there that isn't you? God is being your incorporeal self. Now let's look it up in the dictionary. Incorporeal. I looked it up and it says not consisting of matter. Not discerned by bodily senses and not possessing bodily senses. Incorporeal not consisting of matter, and we're talking about our self, our divine self. And we don't have a second self. We are a divine self, and our divine self is incorporeal, not consisting of matter, not discerned by the physical senses, and not possessing bodily senses. Well, if that's us, who is that who's wearing a dress and wearing a suit of clothes? If that divine incorporeal self is yourself, who got dressed this morning? Who had breakfast? Who's sitting in a chair? Are you willing to say that God got dressed this morning? God had breakfast. God is sitting in the chair. 
or can you step back out of the corporeal sense of self into Christ into the invisible self and see that's what the master revealed all over this earth judge not after the appearances here invisibly is the incorporeal divine self the very life of God where you are seeing a withered man and here is another who is blind but don't believe it behind this visage is an invisible incorporeal divine self the very life of God perfect as the Father now are we the sons of God now are we the divine invisible self now in the year 1971 that may have been a very great shock and surprise to us in the year 1972 it is our work it is our work to learn how to live in the incorporeal selfhood of ourselves and our neighbors to recognize it to acknowledge it to love it to sow to the spirit to walk in the invisible kingdom of God on earth here and now and I know we shall do it because we have been doing it without our knowledge of it we have all walked in the kingdom of God unaware that the Garden of Eden is all there is we have looked out and we have seen pollution we have seen poverty we have seen hate we have seen violence we have seen war we have seen inequalities but where have we seen these we have all seen them in our five senses God did not create them all error is the belief that God is dead and the moment you have seen these things and have pronounced them to be there you have said God is dead see that pollution that means God is dead why didn't God protect that river that air that water why didn't God protect that child why did God send 50,000 boys out here to kill 50,000 boys out there the moment you say these things are happening you are saying God is dead you are living in a corporeal world you are hypnotized you are accepting the world that is not my father's kingdom and you are willing to say it is here and your five senses have fooled you it is not here the world that God did not create cannot be here the world of hate cannot be here because if it's here then God isn't here if pollution is here then God isn't here if every form of evil and error that you witness in this world is here then God is not here which is it the master reveals that where you have seen error you have been wrong because God is there watch see no blindness see no withered arm see no leprosy why because God is there where's the witness your five senses are incapable of witnessing God your five senses are incapable of witnessing life your five senses have no contact with the incorporeal invisible immaterial universe which is the kingdom of God and so now we come to the place where we are to transcend our senses to deny our senses to rise above our sense of life through the five senses this morning if you were among those who seriously take the Beatitudes and understand the message of Christ you would have said now 
What of the spirit can I experience today? How shall I experience the spirit of God? Of my own self, I can do nothing. And therefore, I will turn my complete attention to the invisible spirit of God. And I will take a long, long drink of his spirit. That means you would have turned your five senses away from the world and your mind away from the five senses and you would have rested in the spirit of God, drinking from the living waters of invisible spirit. You would have consciously accepted the presence of God invisible as pure, perfect, infinite spirit and there you would abide drinking deeply of the fountain of spirit. And you would discover that as you do this, the sense mesmerism is broken, the invisible process of spiritual feeding takes place. Grace slowly enters your consciousness performing the will of the Father in you. The eyes are opened, the ears are opened, the soul is opened. We become aware of the invisible universe. And more beautifully still, it, moving through us as hidden manner, forms itself and becomes the living experience of our day. Changing the concepts of the senses into the divine reality of his presence. Is it true? Does it happen? Try it. Every time you rest in the spirit, poor, poor, poor in spirit, needing more, wanting more, spirit, not things, spirit, never wanting the physical, the material, never being fooled, by the forms without substance, never confusing the physical as the divine, never content to receive a handful of physical baubles when the perfect Spirit of God is your divine inheritance. And so we rest in the incorporeal universe, being fed by this infinite process of spirit, of grace, our complete total self dwells in the Father. Not concerned about a world he did not make. You abide in your Father's kingdom and you spend your time becoming a better instrument to receive that spirit. Speak, Father, thy son heareth. What is thy will in me? You rest in the Spirit, and you let the Spirit direct its own efforts through you, as you, living you, being you. It will take care of this world. You can trust it to know what must be done, and you rest. Now let's go way up there because in order to understand incorporeality you have to come out of a little me. Accepting your name as spirit, not flesh and blood, spirit. You know then that there's no time where you began. Spirit was never born. Spirit will never die. There's no time when the spirit of you can end. And you know that your spirit must be as the Father. And you can never say God is just around the corner or God is in a little drawer or God is up in the bedroom. God is everywhere. Then where is your spirit? Is it confined to just a spot or a time? No. You accept that being spirit you are wherever God is. The Son is ever with the Father. I can never leave you or forsake you 
Wherever I am, thou art. Wherever thou art, I am. We are one, inseparably and forever. And so your spirit now is not a finite spirit. There never was such a thing. It's not a localized spirit. It's not a 1971 or a 1972 spirit. It is timeless as the Father, spaceless as the Father, infinite and eternal, pure and perfect and immaculate forever. It has no beginning and no end. You are an everywhere spirit. An everywhere spirit, or you must come back into a sense of mortality. You can never be separated from the Father. You are an everywhere spirit. Now you rest in that everywhereness of yourself. You find the infinite Father has an infinite everywhere Son. You're around the corner, you're across the ocean, you're up and down every street. Everywhere is your spirit. You can never forget this. Everywhere is your spirit. And where your spirit is, only your spirit is. Your name may be Mary, and his name may be Bill. And he is saying, my spirit is everywhere, and you are saying, my spirit is everywhere, and you're both right, because you're both one spirit everywhere. The Father is one infinite spirit, and that is your name. The infinite spirit accepted. And then if we may coin a phrase, you live in the infiniverse, in the infinite universe of spirit. That is your home, and that's where you live, and that's where you breathe, that's where life is, in your infinite spirit. That's where power is. That's where reality is. That's where the spiritual food is. That's where there is no pollution. That is the substance which when it flows through your consciousness manifests itself in this world as the good, the right, the true, the love, the beauty, the harmony. And there's no person on the earth can stop it. It is independent of all human law, independent of all human conditions. But you must live in it. You must be an open receptacle for the infinite flow of your own spirit. Now this is the incorporeal universe, and he who lives in it as the infinite spirit, able to throw aside the concepts of the five senses, which have proclaimed him to be a flesh and blood, living and dying mortal. Whoever can accept that I am the Father a one spirit, one life, thou seest me, thou seest the Spirit of God. That's who stands everywhere. Now we must go to incorporeal man. That spirit which I accept as my spirit everywhere is the spirit of everyone who walks the earth. My spirit is everywhere. And every form that walks through this world is walking through my invisible spirit. When that is your consciousness, you are in your everywhere spirit and you are in the divine law, the divine law of harmony, of abundance, of peace, of truth, of life without end. For you are knowing God aright. You are being the child of God, his infinite spirit, reality.
show clearly makes the point that you cannot have an incorporeal God without form, without shape, and then come around and have a corporeal son with form and with shape. You must have an incorporeal son too. The father and son are one. If you have a God of spirit, you must have a son of spirit. And because spirit has no beginning or end in time or space, no one is excluded. No person on the earth can be accepted as flesh and blood by the true spiritual child of God. You must look past the forms to the incorporeal form, that form which is there without matter, not perceived by bodily senses. And then you have the invisible self of everyone revealed to you as the spirit of your own being. There is no out there anymore. All that is out there is the spirit of you. And the spirit of you out there is the same spirit where you are. And so here is your spirit, there is your spirit, and nothing in between but your spirit, one continuous spiritual identity. You will not hold this all day, but if you start with this, you'll find something opening in you to receive much more. Because you'll be quickened. The spirit you're acknowledging as identity is the only self that can live in the universe of God. There is no mortality in God. Only spirit lives in the Father. Only Father lives in the spirit. God never becomes manifest as a physical anything. but becomes manifest invisibly. And then the five sense creatures of the earth will interpret that invisible manifestation into this world, and it will be good. We have God alive and the Son of God alive and beside the Father and the Son, there is no other. Each of us is that invisible Son. When you live in this incorporeal universe as incorporeal man, accepting your neighbor as incorporeal man, you are fulfilling divine law. Grace functions in you, through you, as you. You don't run your business anymore. You don't run your marriage. You don't run your household. The Spirit of God in you lives itself and outwardly, the world sees you. From time to time in the Bible, you have heard the phrase, turn. If you looked it up in your concordance, you'd be surprised how many times it's mentioned. Literally hundreds of times. One of the most well-known passages is in Ezekiel. God takes no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Wherefore, turn ye and live. Now that turn ye has always seemed to mean change from the sinner to the one living a virtuous life. But actually the Hebrew prophets in revealing the meaning of turning 
to the world were telling us to turn from matter to spirit to turn from the visible corporeal world to the ever-present invisible incorporeal world to turn from the visible to the invisible which is ever-present to turn from the sense of mortality to the awareness of immortality now the turning was revealing the spiritual universe all around us the universe that is not perceived by the senses the taking no thought command by the Christ was to take us out of the five senses which cannot perceive reality to teach us that all error all suffering is sense misperception it is a very fascinating truth to discover that when you encounter a serious ailment that it would be shocking of course to tell the so-called victim about it but you can know that that so-called ailment exists only in your five senses it has no other place I mean you can look at floods, fires, earthquakes, hurricanes, and they exist only in your senses. In the first place, they're not God created, and there is no other creator. And so you're looking at non creation. Why do you see it then if it's non creation? Because your five senses can only see non-creation they have never seen creation and never will so you look at non-creation but if it's non-creation where is it it isn't there where is it in your senses there might be five thousand seeing it and it's in their senses and who created those senses? We learned last week and many times before that God never created the human senses. That's why they're not perfect. That's why they degenerate. That's why they die. In other words, if we were to define mortality, which is what we think we are, mortal beings, mortality is that state or condition in which an individual is not receiving through consciousness the living spirit of God when that living spirit of God is not flowing through your consciousness you are mortal when that living spirit of God is flowing through your consciousness you are immortal and the forms that you manifest will be immortal or mortal depending on whether you're meek unto the spirit or asleep to it and so we're called dead or asleep or prodigal or unenlightened and the word that might also fit very well is separated separated from the flow of spirit we become mortal beings reunited with the flow of spirit we put on the garment of immortality and we come under divine law there isn't an individual on earth who cannot demonstrate this if they are properly taught and lifted up nations can learn it oppressed people can learn it but they have to have someone who knows it to teach it to them I've been rather sad watching India run into Pakistan. We all thought the gurus had it. That proved something to me. And I've also been sad reading some literature from the Far East in which they referred to an individual among them as God incarnate. 
This great teacher is God incarnate. And that's the message the Christian world has also given us, that Jesus was God incarnate, the Son of God. And they're both wrong. The very teacher himself says, God is never incarnate. God never becomes flesh and blood. The moment you accept such a belief, you've lost the truth. And then you cannot demonstrate the truth. God is always God. God never becomes a mortal self. When we look at the Christ Jesus, we're seeing God. Not God incarnate. God's spirit. Thou seest me, thou seest the Father. You're looking at spirit which your five senses cannot see. And the image of man that you see is only in your five senses. We can never call a Ramakrishna God incarnate either. Maybe someone has attained the knowledge that he's not a mortal being, that he's not a carnate being. And when Jesus Christ proclaimed that he was not a carnate being, but thou seest me, thou seest the Father, thou seest Spirit, we turned right around and did the opposite and said, but we're looking at God's Son made flesh. Instead of realizing that this that we were looking at was incorporeal man. Revealing that incorporeal man is everywhere, right where we stand. The incorporeal nature of your being was there revealed as God being. All that God has is yours because incorporeal man is your name, the invisible spirit of God. And all that God has being in God's spirit, all that God has you have. Where's the bridge to bring it in? Consciousness. Now there's the big word, consciousness. And you have said, well, I'm conscious. I'm breathing, I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm conscious. Walking, breathing, and talking is a state of unconsciousness. It has nothing to do with being conscious. You cannot be conscious until you have stepped out of the five senses. The five sense consciousness is the imitation of consciousness. That's why Joel stresses consciousness, divine consciousness, and the five senses have fooled us all into thinking we were conscious. Now when you get out of those five senses, when you can look at them and say, there's where the beggar is, there's where the alcoholic is, there's where the boy is who's taking drugs, in my five sense belief, he's not out there. There's where all these patients in hospitals are, in my five sense belief. There's where all the diseases of the earth are, in my five sense belief. Am I conscious? No. I'm in a state of hypnotism when I see those things. That's not consciousness. That's the imitation of consciousness that has fooled us. But consciousness is conscious of spirit. The five senses are conscious of their own creation. Conscious of matter. Material consciousness and sense consciousness are one and the same. And they are a state of unconsciousness. They are an unfinished consciousness not yet evolved into truth. And coming out of them aware of the presence of spirit in your spiritual consciousness you are conscious of reality of life and then you manifest it it is very difficult to attain and hold and practice the conscious awareness of incorporeality it means looking 
directly at form and knowing that it is a mental image in the senses. That whatever you're looking at is only in your sense of sight, sense of touch, sense of hearing, smell and taste. It isn't there, it's in your five senses. But as you do develop this capacity, you find a complete sea of consciousness present which had been undetected by you. And then you know why you had been unconscious before. As you witness some of these images in your senses change with this new knowledge, you realize the meaning of spiritual power. No longer do you hold God responsible as if God were present where error is, as if God were present where evil is, or as if God were absent where evil is. Instead, you know that God is the spirit that is present, which we are, through sense perception, misperceiving into evil that is not out there but is only in the sense that perceives it. you find you have truly one of the great liberating discoveries of all time when you know that the entire world is in your five senses. You heard it said you're not in San Francisco, it's in you, and that's the meaning. You're not in a room, it's in you. Whatever you know is in your five senses and is not external to them. And anyone who can overcome the image in their senses will discover that it is replaced by another image. We are even told, and some of us have in a measure experienced it, that this universe dissolves around you and a new one takes its place. You begin to see incorporeally, hear incorporeally, touch incorporeally think about it for a moment you realize you've already done it that vision you had you see you saw something not with your eyes you touched something but not with your hands you heard something but not with your ears what was it you were in conscious awareness of an incorporeal universe that magnifies becomes more frequent as you step out of the mesmerism of believing that the images in your mind are external. You place them where they are, in the five senses. They never get out of there. Everything you've ever seen has existed only in your eye, in your field of vision. It was put there by the universal mind of this world. You are not impotent. You are not dependent upon this world. You are not helpless in a sea of human disturbances. As you stand still in your senses, You have the capacity to veto, to nullify, to invalidate what they have misperceived. As you add a new ingredient, not just spirit, but truth and spirit, the knowledge that out there is I, that is what is out there, I, the living perfect spirit of God, that is my self out there. The one spirit of the universe that I am is out there. How can it be defiled? Only sense misperception gives the illusion of spirit being defiled. You stand in that. You practice it until you are aware that everywhere is your spirit and nothing else.
you'll discover the senses lose their capacity to fool you. You won't accept the verdict of the world that God is dead or God is absent or God is indifferent or God is taking a vacation today. You'll know why God and spirit are one and the same. God and my spirit are one and the same. This is a perfect, infinite spiritual universe now. Now. Now in my consciousness is truth. Now in my consciousness is the awareness of the presence of my spirit everywhere. And as you stand in the now of that consciousness, that will become the time picture of tomorrow. Time and space will show forth only what you know in your consciousness now. You can't have health tomorrow without a consciousness of spiritual health now. Unless you found the now of your spirit everywhere, it cannot spin out its perfect spiritual forms. Now you are incorporeal man and woman. Now everyone on the earth is incorporeal because they are your invisible spirit. One indivisible spirit. Now you are the child of God everywhere. Not in a room, not in a city, but everywhere. Now there is one indivisible, invisible self. We're not confused by forms and shapes and colors. We're not confused by races and nationalities. We're not sowing to the form, to the flesh, to the material concept, to the five sense world. We're accepting the immaterial, the spiritual, as the all, the only the incorporeal universe, the incorporeal man. The incorporeal forest, the incorporeal tree, the incorporeal river. We're going to walk in that incorporeal universe. Consciously. Living in. Day by day. Until there are no days. Until this becomes now. Now that is the mystical consciousness. You can call it illumination or Christ consciousness or the fourth dimension. It is being what you are. And as you live there, you can feel. You can feel the power of your being expressing divinity. Moving right through all of the laws of karma, the laws of man, the laws of weather, the laws of good and bad health, the law of age, you can feel your life substance being itself. You'll even come to the point where you know that life substance is always going to be itself. Till the image of man no longer fools you. The image of things, of objects, no longer entices you to possess. Because infinity is your name. Here comes a form walking toward us. Quickly, who is it? Are you going to accept the form or the invisible spirit that is there? Are you going to accept that there's someone out there or will you know that that is my invisible spirit? That spirit out there invisibly is my spirit right here. 
What are you going to see in this world? The invisible spirit or the objects, the many forms that walk across this earth? Do you see, when you supply the missing dimension of my spirit is there, you are one with the universe. The law of spirit takes precedence over the law of man. The law of truth takes precedence over the opposites of truth and the lie. The law of love takes precedence over the opposites of love and hate. By supplying the missing dimension of oneness with the infinite spirit, I am. You come out of the law into grace. Be still and know it is I, not a form over there and a form over there. They are all I invisible, and I invisible there am I invisible where you are. You are that invisible I, that incorporeal spirit. As you can see, all this is outside of a human mind, outside of five sense reaction. Peace be still, it is I. Always and everywhere, no matter what your five senses see, no matter what you touch, no matter what you hear, remember, Invisibly, right there, it is I. It is always I. And I everywhere am I where you are. Right where you are, the I of you contains the everywhere I. All is one I. You are never separated from the infinite. It is your name. Let's not be limited to human capacities and human beliefs. Let's accept the Christ, the inner teacher, who says, I am all there is, only I. And accept that as your name. What you hear, it is the invisible eye of your being, and therefore what you are hearing is not there. I am. Always it is I. Do you not recognize me? It is I. And I am perfect, so if the visible is imperfect, do not be fooled by it, because I am here, and I am there, and I am perfect. Stand ye still in the invisible perfection of I, and behold the salvation of the Lord. Whoever does this discovers the power of it. If you've lost yourself and can't find the you, that's great. That's just fine. The more you can't find you, the more you're going to find I. And so 1972 is in you. You're not in it. It's a concept of the human mind. Yourself includes all of the years that man will ever live. And they're all here now in the eternal self.
instead of a happy new year, we wish you a happy eternity. Let's have a little silence, and then we'll rest for an intermission in about a minute. We're going to have about a six or seven minute recess.